The hunt for hidden planets in our solar system has a long history. By 1900, seven other planets had been discovered from Earth in the solar system, bringing the total to eight planets. But in 1902, American astronomer Percival Lowell suggested the existence of a ninth planet. It was during this time that he was studying Mars and attempting to prove the existence of intelligent life there, as many astronomers at the time thought there must be Martians on the red planet. So, Percival familiarized himself with the solar system and the planets that we knew of during that time. It is that research that led him to believe there was a ninth planet out there. This is because he saw something strange with the relationship between the orbits of the other planets, meteor showers and comets. In fact, something seemed to be affecting the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. In 1905, he began his search for this planet, but would never find it. Lowell passed away in 1916, but another American astronomer would come along and find this mysterious ninth planet. And on February the 18th, 1930, another American astronomer by the name of Claude Tombaugh would find this celestial object, and it would be named Pluto. That's right, Pluto was once known as Planet X. So, why did we tell you all this? Because it seems that history is repeating itself and astronomers see something strange happening in the solar system. But locating planets on the edge of the solar system isn't as easy as you might think it is, even with our current technology. In fact, there might even be more than one planet out there just waiting to be discovered. Which brings us to the current situation, and that is some astronomers think we've yet to discover another ninth planet. But it wouldn't just be another dwarf planet like Pluto, it's probably a lot larger. The reason that astronomers believe there are undiscovered planets out there is due to something called the Kozai Mechanism. The Kozai Mechanism is a dynamic effect in celestial mechanics that describes the evolution of the orbits of two celestial bodies, typically a hierarchical triple system where one body is orbited by a second body, while both are in turn orbited by a third body. This effect was first described by the Japanese astronomer Yoshihide Kozai in 1962. In a hierarchical triple system, the Kozai mechanism causes the inclination and eccentricity of the inner body's orbit to oscillate in a periodic manner. Specifically, as the inner body's eccentricity increases, its inclination decreases and vice versa. This periodic exchange between eccentricity and inclination is a consequence of the conservation of the angular momentum and the conservation of the total energy of the system. The Kozai mechanism is particularly relevant in the study of trans-Neptunian objects or TNOs, which are minor planets or dwarf planets in the outer regions of the solar system beyond Neptune. TNOs often exist in hierarchical triple systems with a distant massive object such as Neptune or another large planet, which can induce the Kozai effect on the orbits of the TNOs. In the case of TNOs, the Kozai mechanism can have significant implications for their orbital dynamics. For example, the Kozai effect can cause the orbits of TNOs to become highly inclined and eccentric over long timescales. This can lead to orbital instabilities, close encounters with other planets or the Sun, and even ejections from the solar system. The study of the Kozai mechanism in TNOs is important for understanding the formation and evolution of the solar system, as well as for predicting the long-term orbital behavior of these distant objects. By studying the effects of the Kozai mechanism, astronomers can gain insights into the dynamical processes that have shaped the architecture of the outer solar system and the orbital characteristics of TNOs. In 2010, two astronomers from the California Institute of Technology provided potential evidence of Planet X using the Kozai mechanism. What they found was discrepancies in the orbital behaviors of dwarf planets and those trans-Neptunian objects. Some examples of TNOs are Pluto, Charon, Eris, and Sedna. The interesting thing about the TNOs is that it was discovered some of them were orbiting in clusters, and this is highly unusual unless something bigger is influencing them. The region these TNOs are in is called the Kuiper Belt, the origin of which is still a big mystery to astronomers. This region of the solar system is incredibly dark and reflects very little light from the Sun. Based on models, astronomers think that Planet X is at least 20 times farther from the Sun than Neptune, 
The average distance of Neptune from the Sun is around 2.8 billion miles. That's so far away that it's mind-boggling to comprehend. It takes Neptune about 165 Earth years to make one orbit around the Sun. If Planet X is out there at that distance, astronomers believe it would take between 10 and 20,000 years to make one full orbit around our Sun. Add all these things together and you get an idea of why it's been so hard for us to locate. In 2014, scientists did calculations and believe that if Planet X does exist, it has to be somewhere between 2 and 15 times more massive than the Earth, and in an orbit between 250 to 1500 astronomical units from the Sun. One astronomical unit, which is defined as the distance between the Earth and the Sun, is 93 million miles. In other words, it's far, far away from us. That is, if it exists. So where are we now in our search? There could be one last place that this mysterious phantom planet could be hiding. Astronomers using the PAN-STARRS or Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System are continuing to systematically cover all the regions of the sky where the planet is predicted to be. So far, a team has said that it's eliminated 80% of the possible locations that were calculated from previous studies. But there is another telescope scientists say will find Planet X almost immediately if it's out there. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory, or the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, is currently under construction, and it's due to come online in January 2025. According to an astronomer by the name of Man Ho Chan from the Education University of Hong Kong, there could be as many as 20 moons surrounding Planet X, each measuring about 62 miles in diameter. Chan says that these moons would be hot from tidal heating from Planet X, and that would raise the temperature of these objects to around minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. That doesn't sound very warm at all, but the average temperature in the Kuiper Belt is a chilly minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit. An example of a hot moon is the volcanically active Io, which orbits Jupiter. The extremely hot molten core of the Moon is the result of intense tidal heating generated by its tug of war with Jupiter. Therefore, if Planet X has moons, and they do get this hot, they will likely emit a faint radio signal that can be picked up by the new Rubin telescope when it comes online. That said, the hunt for Planet X is still on. Remember when we said earlier that there might be two planets out there? Well, astronomers have been searching the cold and mysterious Oort cloud, which is at the end of our solar system, and we're now saying that this vast collection of icy objects, which stretches somewhere between a few hundred billion to several trillion miles from the Sun, could be hiding an alien exoplanet. So how did they come up with this idea? An international team of researchers have simulated the unstable mechanics of the early solar system and found the possibility that one or more planet-sized bodies came to rest in the Oort cloud, and this is how it could have happened. Around four and a half billion years ago, when the solar system was first beginning to form, it was a chaotic place. Rapidly cooling protoplanetary dust clouds sent debris in all directions from large pieces of rock to planet-sized chunks of debris that would have been thrown far enough to escape the Sun's gravity. The interesting thing is that astronomers have observed rogue planets wandering around in other distant solar systems. Although they admit there is a fairly slim chance that one of these rogue planets formed in our early solar system, it's still possible that not only did one or two planets form, they certainly could be floating out there in the cold, icy darkness of the Oort cloud. However, they also think that it's more likely that a Neptune-like planet from another solar system was grabbed by the Sun's gravity and came to rest somewhere in the Oort cloud. They put the chance of this at around 7%, and if that's the case, then another planet X might very well be out there. Although if it was, it would still be too far away to influence the orbit of Neptune and still be as hard to detect. Maybe Planet X or this other theoretical alien planet doesn't exist at all. It could be something completely different. In fact, at least a couple of physicists think that Planet X isn't a planet at all, but instead a primordial black hole. It was the late physicist Stephen Hawking who believed that these types of black holes were remnants of the Big Bang and could range in size from an atom to 100,000 times larger than the Sun. These same physicists think this black hole is the size of a bowling ball, 
and would explain the gravitational and orbital anomalies and also explain why telescopes have never picked up anything. For now, we only have computer models and theories. No physical evidence yet. But remember, it took a long time to find the dwarf planet Pluto, and no one thought it existed either. That said, we invite you to stay tuned here so that if we do discover Planet X, we'll tell you about it. That's all the time we have for now. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by giving it a like. We appreciate all our viewers. Thanks for watching.